Oh, he is. Interesting. Welcome back to Level Up TV. We're on map two of Xenatorium vs. Coma in the impressive Gaming League Grand Final Quake Live Team Deathmatch. Their second cup. It's a French-run organisation and, in fact, a a largely large French contingent on this Five server. French in fact, players in the final. Well, it's two Belgian players, isn't it? Is it three oh, French? I, I look. Looking at well, looking at the flags there. Anyway, the first map did go to XT. It was a very close map for ma majority of it until the last, the penultimate power-ups. And uh, there's been a substitute. Sharp out. Strengths in. Let's go over the teams quickly though. XT, FRS, Wins, Gerpa and Demaya. For Coma, Malaka, Redemptor, The King and Strengths. So yeah, I'm Disrepute. And uh, it's a Vore, a co-commentator here. Thanks for reminding me of who I am, mate. This is important with your um, amnesia. So Vore deep inside, probably one of the worst maps in the history of Quake. I'm not biased. <laughs> what, well, do you, what do you expect I to see really, on this? I don't disagree with this, so... If you want balance, maybe you need someone other than me. <laughs> what do I expect? I mean, well, we saw how amazingly well XT played in this map in the previous rounds. I mean, their performance against Action, for example, was unbelievably brutally dominant. And, you know, I was, I was amazed at the time at just how easily they won that game. Now, I don't know, I mean, Coma, I can remember tournaments maybe a few months ago where, I don't know, I just seem to remember them picking this map. Uh, what tournaments were they? The ESL TDM ones, you know, that used to run on one night? Yeah, I think, I think you might be right. There was, well, there's G Sports, there's one night cups. Um, I, I think it was now, ESL that I played in against yeah, them but, on this map. But at that time, you'd have to say that, you know, Coma have improved a lot since then, so you don't know, are they still, you know, focused on being good at this map? Things can change over time. Starting off with the King's point of view, gets the shaft, Gerpa backs off, and gonna mop up that health. Intelligent play, that's the best he could have done, Gerpa. Did a lot of damage as well, really, I mean, only 19 health left for the King. And when you take that health, you know, all of a sudden the King has to, well, he's gonna go back to full health from that 50, but... but he's taking the health away from teammates, this, exactly. potentially, so... If you're nice gonna, die, if gonna die, you should always deny as many resources as you can. Look at this, look how early the squad is, two seconds time, one, it's on 30 really? seconds. Wow. And nobody was expecting that, you had strengths just standing right by it, and obviously they were in position, but you just wouldn't yeah, expect it. Yeah, you can never it. be prepared for a quad that early. Wow, run straight to that shotgun from Wins, but it really didn't do too much damage. The King coming round with the shaft. I wonder if Wins has also just picked up that, that lightning gun. So uh, there might only be one lightning gun player on the map. Wow. <laughs> That was a heavy shotgun hit. Got to be careful, the spawners here machine gunning him down. Might want to just move back to quad, pick up the 25s. Yeah, it didn't run into anyone there. Kind of fortunate, I guess. I mean, when you've taken out the 9 health and 10 armor, I mean, that was that must have been a full damage shotgun hit. I didn't exactly take note of what he was at before that hit, but a full 110 damage, I'd imagine. Now, if they watched the stream of XT playing, look at this mega pickup by the king. It seemed like he just stumbled on it. Oh, he's run out of ammo. That's the worst time to run out. He could have done a lot more damage to Winds as well. Winds could be in trouble here, going way too aggressive in that area of strength. Yeah. Getting 80% rail there. Although you'd have to say that in that situation, you know, the rail would have probably been hit anyway, so Winds was kind of right in looking to go aggressive and put the damage out you know, before his death. And this is something we've seen in terms of the play from XT earlier in this tournament. They're not going to be rushing this quad, at least early on in the map. Which Coma, no, they, I'd imagine, would be used to other teams doing. For sure, they only look to go there when they feel they've made use of the red armor. They've got lightning guns from the other side of the map as well. You know, that's it's an important thing to do, I think, on this map. You, you can't just throw kills away. You know, giving the players like strengths, easy rails to just hit all day, because you know he's not going to miss any or many of them. Impressive. That's another good shot there. You don't often expect to get railed when you stood there. There you go, they have dived onto the bridge. Look at that. LG from wins, but Strengths is L... Oh, sorry, Rail is good enough to cope with it. That was good play from, well, kind of both of them. 
Smart as well, look how he dropped his railgun. You know, still has some ammo left in it, but he's only got three health. I think X2 wow. chose a good time to move in there, you know, but... If FRS knew his health after that first attack, he would be pretty disappointed he didn't come out on top. XT just being denied that rail pickup. It's quad in nine seconds. And Coma have got back into position. So I was saying it was a good time for XT to attack, I thought, but they didn't win out. I mean, that's the only risk of playing the way XT do. Oh, let it see this point run first and come back to this. It's got to be careful he doesn't get machine gun down. Only 17 health. Machine gun doing five damage is only going to take four bullets to kill him and I don't know what the damage per second is but it'd be pretty easy to shoot him down no now up to around 50 50 with a full clip on the uh, shotgun quad on ends didn't yeah, really so do too much the risk in the way XT are playing is as we saw that they attacked at the right time, but the attack was pretty well defended and they didn't win the area. So the problem is, you know, they're sat over at the red the whole time. They're, and unless their attacks are successful over to the quad, you know, the attack fails, you know, they're not going to get quad. Wins has been completely caught out there. Yeah, they, they just let uh, Coma sit back, get rails on all their players, and, you know, Coma have a good chance to defend the quad each time XT look to come in. Now, XT have got to be really careful that their attacks are actually perfectly executed. Looks like they have gone that way now, but I mean, Malika has just confiscated the red armor, so they, they'd be in serious trouble if they fail to win over the bridge now. Yeah, he, he's got some pressure on him now. I mean, he's got wins to go up against with a lightning gun and a teammate. He's doing a really good job. His positioning here is perfect. His team are taking so long to get back. I'm yep, really surprised are. at this. I mean, Malika's done exactly what you want to do. That was actually perfect play. Yeah, he couldn't have done any better in that situation. I mean, there's no way he could have looked to go aggressive and try and kill, uh, I think, Wins and Demaya. I mean, he'd have just been killed by one or the other. He did perfectly in that situation. Now, what XT are doing... Chance. XT are doing a great job here, though, of moving in on those yellows first, denying the resources. It's now quad time! Oh, my God! Gerpa did just grab it! Before he was up the bounce pad, he is eliminated from a couple of Coma players. One guy just behind him, point blank range rockets in the back. They've closed the gap though, for. Yeah, they have. I mean, that, that time you know, XT's attack on quad was successful. It, it looked like maybe Coma had a chance to defend that, but all of a sudden I just I looked around and I saw it was XT who were actually in control. I think XT moved away from red a bit earlier then to try and get in some ambush attacks at the yellows. It worked yeah, it looked out like it did. Well. On the on the first, sorry, on the second quad or the first quad, whichever one it was, you know, I did feel their attack was too late. And you know, if you attack too late and you don't succeed with the attack, then you know you don't get another chance to come in. And that it's it's going to have to be you know really careful from XT. You know, at the moment they've got quad and. I don't know if they're getting red at the moment. It doesn't look like they Wins are, moving out. He's aggressing on the Coma team. Strengths is the only guy left defending. Wins runs out of ammo with the LG. So does Strengths, though. And Wins comes out on top, grabbing that red arm and straight back to the bridge. Make sure that's defending. They've come out pretty well out of that battle. Yes, yeah, so this is a much better situation now for XT. They've been getting reds and they've got control of the quad. I'd expect once they stop this onslaught into the red room, Wins will be sending someone back or running back himself to try and get that red. Although, with only three health, I doubt he's going to be the one making it all the way back. Well, he's on his way, but he's slightly late, so he just might look to try and hit a rail. I don't know if he heard the bounce pad behind him, or if that's just something we can hear in spec. Looks like Strengths was, though. I had to grab it, and oh, that is wow. brilliant play. Two rails and then a direct rocket. He gets oh. that kill. Well, unlucky to get killed by the grenade, but still amazing work by Wins because that's two big kills we go. just before quad. Five seconds to go on Demire's point of view. He has got a shaft and a rail. He's in a good position to grab it and defend it here. Though look at that, Redemptor. I think he got railed off of it. Maybe he did. Either that, or he didn't try to get uh, quite get the air strafe right onto the quad pickup. Yes, he did just miss it anyway. It should have probably been a grab to Coma, but Demai coming out on top with it. Only 19 yeah. ammo on this shaft. Yeah, and no health to work with either, so no, the only thing you can really do is just stay around this safe area and see if there's any kills to pick up, but there's no way he can really confidently push into other parts of the map. 
Yeah, I think he's done the right thing there. Might want to just health up a little bit, maybe look for this upper yellow. But uh, in 57% rail. That's his standout stat. And yeah, hitting a lot lower LG than you'd expect maybe from the mine. Normally he's got very you know, solid hit scare name. Koma look like they're just going to give away frags here, going out that bounce pad against three yeah. XT players, and perfectly <laughs> positioned. I can't really see a reason for them to attack at that time. I mean, we're still over a minute until quad. You know, there's yellow armors and stuff to think about, rather than just you know, pushing into quad, which really, you have to say, quad doesn't have anything other than positional advantage. There's no real resources there other than the railgun. But, you know, they're still going aggressive onto it. I mean, two people now have attacked them. Nice rocket from Demaya. You can yeah, cycle around a little bit. We're following wins. He's going to get shot, and Malak is going to grab this red armor. And a rocket launch. So 35 seconds before the quad, they might start to move in here and try and get that position on the items. Wins does hit a nice air rocket before he's eliminated by Malika's grabbed rail. 15 frag difference. We've got 20 seconds till the quad. Yeah, they've got a long time to defend this. I don't think they've got much armor. They got the position, but have they got the resources? That's the thing. They got. Seems like they got bridge actually blocked off though. With one player was able to move out. Got to watch these bounce pad attacks. They have got to hit their shots here. Well, it looks like they defended it pretty effectively there. I think yeah, that was nice defense. I'm not sure the attacks were really that effective by XT. They I mean, weren't synced up really. It was, it was kind of too many coming in one, maybe two at the most. Oh my God! The king getting caught in the back there. Oh my god, these grenades going to get him! <laughs> yeah, perfect. Nowhere he could really go. It, was, it wasn't safe to move in any direction. and You've got to hope for a bit of luck in a situation like that if you want to survive. It's a dangerous route to take this sort of staircase side if you've been spotted. Yeah, it has an element of surprise if no one's expecting you to come that way to red, but you know, you'd have to say that getting in there unnoticed in that direction is more luck than judgement. So it's just 11 frags the difference though, it's still anyone's game as we approach the halfway stage of this second map. Remember, XT took the first map, so Koma need to take this second map. I'm going to have a quick look at the scoreboard right after this fight here. Look, two players dropping down by Koma. FRS taking out the first, I think they might have grabbed the Mega and just escaped, but XT coming out with a plus one frag there. So the scores, looking at this, plus 7 net for FRS and uh, plus 10 net for Gerpa again. The 4k damage though for wins despite the negative frag net. Oh, that was a silly rail to give away. I don't know why you would... Yeah, I mean, I think he misjudged the sound there. I mean, we know how bad sound is in Quake Live and I, I kind of think he thought that there was someone in the middle room. Yeah, I, I thought above was the bounce well. pad. I mean, not that you could have heard Strix if he was just stood still, but I think he just assumed it was safe having heard those sounds in the middle room. So following Strix hitting 83% rail, so absolutely the worst person on the map to give it away to. Although down to 76 after that miss. Eight seconds to go till the quad. Strix is just going to have to cover it out now, I think. He can't really make it towards the quad. Looks like teammates coming in behind though. They might do the damage. Goes for the rocket jump just a little bit late. Is he going to frag the quad? No, Demaya does it. just survive. 36 health. It's now a 20 frag not, margin. So, you know, even though Strength's kind of suicided in there, he's made the quad have to really slow his run down, so not going to get many frags from this, I don't think. He could win over this red at about the right time, though. That's the thing. Five seconds to go until it spawns. He decides to move back. Doesn't know the time of red, though. Secures out this quad bridge area, so... Did hit one key objective with that power run. Yeah, that, that quad would have been a lot more useful if he was aware of the red time. I mean, he could have just stayed there. His teammates could have made sure that there's no chance to you know, take the quad position over. They're making a push to the bridge with two players. One was wow. easily eliminated, and then Red Hems are coming out on top there, actually. Oh, he's going to get caught now, though. And as I say, Vaughan, I mean, it's a 20 frag margin, roughly. They, um,. There's a 10 frag margin before the previous power up, and the power up didn't get any kills, so it's all on the setup. They got a lot of frags, XT. Yeah, I mean, that's quite often what happens on you know, a lot of the maps in Quake Live's map pool. Not necessarily the quad getting all the frags, but the actual setup of the quad and good positioning. 
picking up just easy kills. Wynn's just got a perfect timing on that red, and that is as There's good as the last one. Koma because you know, unlike in the first stages of this map where Koma had a real solid control of quad, ever since about the two or three minute mark, it's really been XT who'd mostly had the quad and rail area, but they still continue to get so many reds. You can't really expect to keep it close for long if you're giving up quad position and losing red. Well, it doesn't look like XT are going to get in on quad this time, judging by Wins's point of view. Oh my god, Redemptor almost caught. Should take out Wins here, confiscate that rail. Gurp is going to... Oh my god. Quad. <laughs> Lucky, I think, that he was on staircase there. Yeah. You know how notoriously hard rockets are to hit on stairs. He yeah, almost dived to his death there. Does come out with that mega health, though, underground as well. That was the upper yellow spawning we saw on the time and not the lower yellow as he just jumped Dubber over. again and he could finish it red, although slightly late. Three of them there, up. takes out one, needs to take out wins. Oh, wins must have had Look red. at that. Six health. He did, I think he mopped up the health bubbles though, so... Wins is going to find it difficult to stack up again. I'm going to cycle away from it actually. Gerpa picking up the shaft underground. I think it's so unfortunate when it's, it's wins you come up against in a situation like that because... Now, he does hit such good LG that you know, many other players you would have perhaps survived against. Nearly all players, I would imagine. 60 seconds till that next power up. XTR a bit on the back foot here. They haven't got too much to work with. Yeah, well timed you know, attack. Look at that ambush kill on Gerpa down at the LG by Redemptor. It does give away that rocket launcher to wins as the shaft spawned as well. So XT hit that. I do score. think at this stage of the game, the frag lead is so important to have because you know it's, there's no pressure on XT now to be the ones looking for the frags. They can just play a counter game where you know, they, My force, God. they force Coma, you know, to make the uh, to make the plays, and they just pick up the counter frags. Strengths is he going to get caught out here? I thought he'd just switch to shaft and finish him off, but he's going to get <laughs> nice direct rocket going to back off for the health, miss out on the red, so that was good rush play by XT. Because that could have been a key red to pick up as well, I mean we're looking at yeah, 10 seconds been the, ago before red. Um, yeah, the only red before quad really. Nice LG takes that Demai, I think he was the guy with the red actually. Oh no, that was a terrible dropped quad. I'd say a good grab by FRS, well timed jump, but really they should have locked that down Coma. Yeah, I mean, Strengths nearly hit the rocket to push FRS off, but it, it just looked like one of those situations where no one's got the exact time and there's no one ready to pick it up. Yeah, I mean, they had three players sort of watching that direction bounce back, but they were all watching the bridge area more than anything. Yeah, FRS. and that would have been an important quad. I mean, you can't expect to come back from pretty much 20 frags, although it's down to 12 frags. You, know, it's, it's, you want to have the quads to be able to do it, you know, more reliably. Yeah, you can win. do it without quad, but not easily. Wins escapes with two health again. I don't think I've seen him escape with so little health so many times before. 220, oh my god! That's really nice play. Really intelligent. You've always got yeah, to watch this spawn, but especially when you're low health. Yeah, it's always a good idea to spam a, towards a spawn point when you see a, a teammate pick up a kill. But, you know, you, your luck really has to be in for such a perfect hit with a rocket. Redemptor pummeling the dead body there. A little bit of extra damage, so we'll disregard all of his damage over the two maps. As a result, as punishment for that one. Strength's just dropping down for this Mega in eight seconds. Got to watch out for these spam grenades. There's only one dropping down, actually, so should be all right. So there might be a dropper. There it is, Gerpa. Did Gerpa grab it? He did, didn't he? I like how Strength just decided to throw the lightning gun at him, <laughs> as if that was going to finish him off. That should do some damage, shouldn't it? You can just throw Weapon the gun throw, at him. Weapon yeah. Coming up the bounce pad against, what is that, four railers in total, I think? At least three of them surviving and, well, hitting What is it? And the lack is like, Whoa. stealthed in behind them. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't notice him. Didn't quite work out, though. It looks like XT will come away with this quad. And it could be oh the game deciding quad. Gerpa getting caught right in the air as he jumps. One health! Cool. He's got time on Mega. So he's looking a lot more healthy, and they'll think he's very weak. Oh my god, almost got caught yeah, by the rocket. It's dangerous to assume the quad is weak. I mean, you know, we've seen a lot of teams in the past throw away frags thinking the quad's weak and just thinking they're going to just finish him off with a machine gun. Wow. 
by strength easily finishes him off with his lightning gun. 38% LG for strength. 100 100 now jumping towards the bridge. Oh. That is an important rail to hit, otherwise, he was right on top of that player. And look yeah, at the armor rail. gone. In fact, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. And if he hadn't hit that rail, strength would have been on the bridge. And, you know, lightning gun versus rail gun in a real close combat situation, you'd always favor lightning gun, especially when it's being wielded by strength. Now, that clutch rail just makes things so different. Two seconds ago, until that red armor spawns above. It looks like Homer have that position, but I lost a couple of players by the XT attacks. Just needs to be a game of attrition now for XT. Just do constant damage to Koma and there's no yes. way they can come back. It's fine for them to just go frag for frag. They don't need to worry about dying as long as they're just going frag for frag. The danger is obviously when you're in a lead and go passive. If you stop going frag for frag and let the other team get some momentum going, then all of a sudden that game can be a lot closer. And looking at some of the scores, plus 15 net for strengths. Everybody else on the Coma team, I guess their traditional lineup is in a negative net area. So he was definitely a, you would probably suggest a positive substitute to bring in. Well, you'd have, I don't know if strengths regularly plays with this Coma lineup, but you know, individual skills is a great addition to any team. But you know, the team play might take a slight hit. You now they might lose the ability to. You know, time the tax perfectly with all their players. Two seconds to go till this final quad of the map. XT are going to grab it as well and just shore out that win. It is fragged in the back. 30 frags is the margin. No more power ups left in play, and we've only got a single minute left of this tournament. Yeah, so it's not best of five, the final. It's not best of five, it is That's a best same. of three. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's unfortunate that Coma lost their first map that they picked, which is Purgatory. You know, they started really well on it, and it was so close for a long time. I think they had opportunities to perhaps win that map, but as I kind of suspected before this game started, you know, XT, this is a very strong lineup, and as much as Coma have improved, you know, I always did think it would be very tough for them. Any, uh, Man of the match for you, Vore? Well, it's been you know, a very strong performance by wins on both maps. I mean, you, you can't expect that from him, but there's no reason not to say he's man of the match. I mean, top performances on both maps. And there we go. Five seconds left of this deep inside map. XTR. Your impressive gaming league champions in the second TDM Cup. Let's hope they run many more in the future. Um, so that's the TDM over with, with me and Vore.